Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be taking a look at a leaked Time Spy benchmark from the upcoming Ryzen 7 2700X CPU, which is part of the second generation of the Ryzen family from AMD. And I'm going to be comparing that up against a nearly identical system with a Ryzen 7 CPU from the first generation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the leaked benchmark first and what we can learn from this and also how I use that to set up the test system that I used compared directly to the Ryzen 7 2700X. So here we are over on the 3DMark database. As you can see, this is a Time Spy benchmark on version 1.0 with the named AMD Ryzen 7 2700X 8-core processor, which they tested along with a single AMD Radeon RX 580, and it ended up scoring 4,745 on the overall score, although the most important score really here, really here is the CPU score, and on that, it got 8,405 with the Ryzen 2700X on Time Spy. Scrolling down a bit through here, we can see for the graphics card, as I said, once again, they were using an AMD RX 580 with 8GB of VRAM, and the core clock was at 1380MHz and a memory clock of 2GHz. Now, as soon as I saw this, I pretty much knew in my head, I was like, that's got to be the Red Devil RX 580, which I own and which I've tested multiple times. And on the vendor here, we can see TLU or Tull Corporation, which I didn't know up until this time had related to Power Color, the makers of the Red Devil RX 580. But a quick Google search pretty much proved that to me as I opened it up on the Tull Corporation's website. And you can see here, PowerColor advertising the Red Devil series of graphics cards. So we now know they are running the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X along with the AMD Red Devil RX 580, which I have so that we can compare it to this. And also for the memory, as far as I'm concerned, they're running 16 gigabytes at 2,400 megahertz. So I did exactly that just as they did. I ran 16 gigabytes of RAM at 2,400 megahertz. So we're looking at the same exact graphics card, same exact RAM speeds. And then for my processor, I was running the Ryzen 7 1700. I didn't have the 1700X set up in a system, but I did adjust clock speeds for that to test accordingly because as you guys probably know, the 1700 and the 1700X are pretty much identical apart from the out of the box clock speeds. And because the RX, the, I'm sorry, the Ryzen 7 2700X has a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz, which we've talked about recently and is now confirmed once again via this benchmark, as you can see here, it's running at 3.7 gigahertz with a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz and with the new generation Ryzen processors that would be running across all cores and the 1700X boost up to 3.8 although it's on only a few cores or a couple cores I should say so in order to make it an even comparison I wanted it to be running across all cores just like it was on this benchmark so I boosted up my Ryzen 1700 up to 4 gigahertz to get it as close as possible to the Ryzen 7 2700X I I tried, to, I tried to get it to 4.1 gigahertz as hard as I could. I tried adjusting voltage multiple times, but the closest that I could get to the 2700X was to put it up to 4 gigahertz. But as you'll be able to see here in a moment with the comparison, that that was actually close enough that we can really tell quite a bit from this testing scenario. So as you can see right here in this side-by-side -side comparison with my Ryzen 7 1700 and the Ryzen 7 2700X, they ended up getting a CPU score of 8,405, which I'd previously mentioned, which had a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz and a base clock of 3.7. And my Ryzen 1700, which was operating at four gigahertz across all cores, just like their turbo clock, was at 8,322 on the CPU score. So we're only behind by about 700 points roughly from what the 2700X was able to get. And this is in a nearly identical system as I had previously mentioned. We're both running the RX 580 from PowerColor Red Devils. You can see vendor is Toll Corporation, same amount of memory, same core clock of 1,380 megahertz, same memory clock of two gigahertz and all of that. So we're, like I said, pretty much identical system here. I was running G-Skill RAM versus them running Kingston RAM, but it was the same 
2400 megahertz on both of the systems and yeah Ryzen 1700 was up at 4 gigahertz while theirs was at 4.1 so only behind by about roughly 100 megahertz on the Ryzen 1700 but that saw a pretty minimal disparity between the actual CPU scores and even the overall scores here on the Time Spy benchmark. Let's go ahead and throw up a graph here right now and you guys can see this where we've got the 2700X up to 2700X up at the top with the CPU score as well as the overall score. You can see the 2700X got 8405 while the Ryzen 1700 got 8322 at 4 gigahertz and then down at 3.8 gigahertz which is what the 1700x boost to it got 7999 and the difference between the overall score is even smaller because that's taking into account the cpu as well as the gpu to give us an overall score but the cpu score is really the main one to focus on here and you could see between the 1700 at 4 gigahertz and the 2700x at 4.1 gigahertz we're seeing a very very small difference going between the two so really what we can take away from this is that the major difference we're seeing here on the 2700x from the previous generation of ryzen processors is clock speed now it's really anyone's best guess as to what the 2700x and the rest of the lineup from the ryzen plus family will be able to overclock to but if they're coming out of the box like i said at around 4 to 4.1 gigahertz um, we're probably looking at these overclocking, I would assume 2 to 300 megahertz above that. So we might be looking at just 4.4, maybe even 4.5 on a good day out of the Ryzen Plus CPU. So that's all good as far as getting better clock speeds. Now, would this be enough reason for someone on the previous generation to upgrade? Probably not, unless you can go ahead and sell your previous generation since your motherboards are going to be backwards compatible anyway and you just want to get the higher clock speed. You could probably sell your previous generation Ryzen 1700 or 1600 or whatever and upgrade and still be able to operate in the same exact motherboard. So if you want to be able to get a few hundred megahertz higher, then that's certainly going to be an option, but that's probably going to be a select group of you. But for the people that maybe didn't upgrade and you're maybe you're running AMD FX or even Phenom processors from a few generations back, then this might be the time to upgrade or you can wait until the following year where we're probably expecting Ryzen 2 shrunk down to 7 nanometer which will probably see better IPC gains as here we're really looking at it seems like anyway just core clock gains because they have the higher clock speeds out of the box and probably going to be over the overclock just a little bit better than the previous generation so I hope this answered some questions for you that maybe you had in the back of your mind is whether or not we were going to see a huge IPC gain at least based on this comparison with the league benchmark it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case but with the higher clock speeds, it will probably be just a bit faster than the previous generation. But it's really just coming down to the higher clock speed. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts, as always, down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new at all, don't forget to leave a like on it down below. And subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you in the next video. Ta-ra.